Okay guys, welcome back. Um, we're carrying on with our rare Kyosho Minizi unboxings. And this one kind of has become a little bit rare guys. Not one of my favourites, I don't think it's really amazing, but I did get a bundle from Europe. And because postage was going to be more or less the same if I got one, I got three. I ended up getting three. <laughs> but yeah, this is probably one of those bland decaled cards I've ever come across. So, yeah, so it is the Moody in it. Yeah, Ferrari, Ferrari 360 challenge, yeah? And what happened? Why did they... <laughs> Why are there so few decals on this car? I don't get it. I mean, it's okay. It's not one of the most amazing Ferraris, but it, they are becoming rare, isn't it, guys? That's, and that's what this unboxing is about. So, yeah... Nothing truly amazing. Let me take out the case, but yeah, nothing truly amazing, guys. Um, I don't know the whoever decaled this car out what they were thinking <laughs> at the time. Looks like a seven-year-old put stickers on it, but yeah. I mean, come on, man. You could have a bit of <laughs> a bit more originality than that. I suppose the front, no, it's like bland one. Anyhow, not here to shoot it down. To compensate for this one, guys, I'm gonna get one of my totally decaled rare minizis out um, which you might not have seen guys let me show you this if you want to see decals so I'm going to balance it out with one of my old little beauties yeah don't know if you've seen that before guys but I don't think this has been seen very much it was one of my earlier earlier vids so you may never have seen it and it's worth seeing because Minizy went to town. <laughs> sure, sure. Minizy went to town on this car. I don't think there's a spot on the car where there's no kind of like decal or. It's crazy, man. Even on the back, the birds are tweeting, guys. Not literally, but you know, they're joining me in my commentary. That's probably the most decaled car out of all the Mini Z's. I mean, they like didn't miss a space. <laughs> There's stuff everywhere. It's pretty overpowering. So, <laughs> from like no decals to all decals, these two are quite contrasting. But yeah, this is pretty sought after now, guys. I remember when I first got into Mini Z's, you would see them come up, but as time's gone on, no, not really. And to find one boxed, whoa, that'll be a mission. Um, but yeah, but definitely is it's, it's one for the collectors, is that one. That's one for the collectors. All the guys who are serious about their Mini Z's and collecting them, that's one that's in their collection, guys. And uh, it is, it's got its own little charm. Definitely has got its own charm. But that had to go with that car, I'm sorry, guys. Had to go because what a disappointment. <laughs> Anyhow, they balanced each other out, so it's cool. I'm happy with that. Right, check them out on the display stand, guys. Get ready because there's more crazy unboxings to come, guys. We're going to hit 100. So, yep, stay with us. Stay tuned. Get subscribed. Get notified. And the story doesn't end there, guys. There's other little vids that will be coming up. Uh, custom cars that we're getting sprayed up and collections and, yeah. Maybe some more, yeah, races as well, outrun video, whatever. So, you want to be subscribed, don't miss out. Check them out on the stand. Okay guys, and here we've got the Ferrari 360 Modena in red. And this is called, the livery is red, Rosso Coso. <laughs> right. I mean, this is the 360 um, decaled version, isn't it guys? So it's a little bit rarer than the normal ones, but the original batch of these produ were produced as a Mini Z in March 2002 and they've become pretty rare. The wheelbase, guys, is 94mm set L and the chassis type is a rear motor mount. The front wheels have got no offset and the rears are wide, but they've got no offset either. And the wheels on this little bad boy are different to the ones that come on the stock. The stock 
360 Medina comes with a five spoke silver wheel and these are completely different. <laughs> I'm not sure what, what they're called but they are uh, much more different looking. So the Ferrari 360 is a two seater sports car built by Ferrari from 1999 to 2005. It succeeded, it succeeded the Ferrari F355 and was replaced by the Ferrari F430. It is a mid-engined rear-wheel drive V8 powered coupe. Ferrari partnered with Alcoa to produce an entirely new aluminium space frame chassis that was 40% stiffer than the F355 which had utilised steel. The design was 28% lighter despite a 10% increase in overall dimensions. So along with a lightweight frame, the new Pinina Farina body styling deviated from traditions of the previous decades of the sharp angles and flip up headlights. The new V8 engine, common to all versions, utilises a 3.6 litre capacity flat plane crankshaft, titanium connecting rods and generates 400 brake horsepower. I always felt they looked more like Porsches, these cars. This and the F430 uh, definitely look a little bit more. I mean, the, the rears, the, the twin um, brake lights are always going to be Ferrari, but the front of these just seems so Porsche like. So, despite what looks like on paper modest gains, in reality, the power to weight ratio was significantly improved on the F355. On this, over the F355. This is due to a combination of both lighter car and more power. The 0 to 100 kilometers or 0 to 62 mile an hour acceleration performance improved from 4.6 to 4.3 seconds. And the first model to be rolled out was the 360 Medina followed later by the 360 Spider. And then finally, a special edition. Have we got any more specs on the car itself? Uh, heaps of information, but I just want to know a little bit about its top speeds. Alrighty. But yeah, there's a whole heap of information about uh, things that were upgraded from the previous version. And... Yeah. Um, so they had loads of stuff guys, there's loads of information on it. So the 19 inch BBS wheels, carbon fiber for the frames and seats and mirrors, titanium springs which are also 20% stiffer, carbon fiber reinforced silicone carbide, ceramic com composite brakes, um, brake discs, a variety of options allowed to further for further weight reductions, including replacing leather interior with fabric, removal of the power windows, and mirrors and deletion of the stereo. Blow me neck man, talk about going back to basics. <laughs> All the stuff that you have, you know, the luxuries that you look for in a Ferrari, they took them out to to lighten the weight. Wow. That, I mean that leather is what you kind of look for in a Ferrari guys, but yeah. No stereo. Wow, these guys are serious about reducing weight. <laughs> Alright guys, so yep. A definite rare little beauty guys um, yeah not the most beautiful looking minis you've ever seen but definitely one that should be in the collection so yeah check out that little bad boy guys when he joins the fleet I don't know if I'd use that in a street race vid it's not as sporty or as crazy looking as what I like but yeah still rare okay guys check out the other little bad boys in this series plenty of stuff to come okay guys here we've got a classic mini z guys the mazda rx7 fd3s and this is the kyosho makers okabi jidosha 2009 number 15 so this definitely is rare guys um pretty hard to find them all cased up and wrapped up unless someone's selling off 
primary stock that's been locked away for years. But um, but yeah, Incre increasingly, guys, it's um, you're seeing less of them on eBay. So yep, it was produced in two thousand November two thousand and nine. Uh, it's got a ninety millimeter M wheelbase. Chassis type is the rear motor mount. And the front is one millimeter narrow, and the rear is one point five narrow or one millimeter wide. So. Yep. So the earlier model of the FD3S with the famous Kyosho Minizi 10th anniversary livery was designed by M. Hirotani, the decal designer of the Minizi basically, for the 2009 Super Taikyu Endurance Championship. So basically the Mazda RX-7 right, was a sports car that was produced by the Japanese automaker Mazda from 1978 to 2002. The original RX-7 featured a 1146cc twin rotor, one curl rotary engine and a front midship rear wheel drive layout. The RX-7 replaced the RX-3, both were sold in Japan as the Savannah and later replaced all of the Mazda rotary engine cars except the Cosmo. So originally the RX-7 was a sports car with pop-up headlamps um, and then it was offered as a two-seat coupe with the optional occasional rear seats in Japan, Australia, the United States and other parts of the world. So the rear seats were, were initially marketed as a dealer installed option for North American markets. So the RX-7 made car and driver magazines 10 best lists 5 times and 811,634 RX-7s were produced. So the third generation of the RX-7, the FD, it featured an updated body design and the 13B REW was the first ever mass-produced sequential twin turbocharger system to export from Japan, boosting power to 252 horsepower. So the Super Taikyu is Japan's second largest endurance racing series after the Super GT. And the Super GT has got two classes. Super Taikyu has six classes from the SD5, which is mostly comprised of Toyota Yaris to GT3. The number 15 Kyosha Makers was one of the three cars owned by Okabe Jidosha in the Super Taikyu 2009. It took the pole at round five Fuji Speedway and three times second, and so it placed, so its third place was well deserved. Okay. I don't know if that made sense to you, but... <laughs> Anyhow, it's an interesting when you see that though, guys. Yeah, so I definitely do like it. Um, you probably would have seen my flip tone version of that car with the headlights up. Um, but yeah, that's probably the most decaled one I've ever come across anyway. And they could have done with a few brighter colours in there. You know me, guys, I like black to go with something a bit more you know, like orange or red or something like that just to bring out the colours a little bit. It just seems a little bit dull. The white's not very um, imposing so. But still, one for the collection guys. Still cool. Definitely holds its value. Because um, I know a lot of guys who've been looking for them and they can't find them. But yep. When I first started Mini Z's I, could, I, I remember seeing them quite a bit but yeah. Or more scarce. I think as more and more people have got into it, like in America, Mini Z's have just, whoa, they've flourished on there in the last year and a bit. Like, and definitely during lockdown, I think more and more people just were at home and wanted to entertain themselves. 
So that's why if you noticed Kyosha started making more American cars like uh, the Camaro um, What else did they make? Oh Well cars that appeal to the American market so the MG um, But yeah They noticed that there was a bit of a shift there so they wanted to um, Facilitate that market basically. Okay, right guys Check out the next vids guys get subscribed get notified. Don't miss out. Okay